another hot, sticky day is ahead of us. So we're going to check out the garden early. We live in a very interesting climate. We are between zone 6A and B, and we're in a valley. So every single day, or morning, night, whenever it comes, the fog comes in. And everything is left wet, which I think is why I'm struggling with the issues with the fungus on a lot of my squashes, because I learned my lesson the hard way. You do not want to water from overhead. You want to water at the root, at the ground level, which I've been doing, and I'm still struggling with fungus issues. This is my mandala keyhole, no big garden bed. I made it using layers of cardboard, mulch, compost, and wood chips. The goal with this bed is to build soil. Is it the most bountiful garden right now? No. No, it's not. But it will be. You need to realize things take time and patience. And we have time. We're building the soil slowly, one garden at a time. And next year, I can only imagine how much more bountiful this garden will be. But it has still been feeding us, and it will still feed us. I have tons of peppers. Look at them. The cayenne cherry tomatoes. Other little tomato starts are starting. The asters, basil, cosmos. This is my favorite part of the garden. To some, it looks like a weedy mess. To me, it is a natural oasis. Just look at all the beautiful grass, the flowers, the insects, the birds, everything thrives and needs this. Weeds and grass aren't always bad. Weeds are not always bad. They help. Some, yes, we want to get rid of. We don't want them to take all our nutrients. But others, I leave. I've had a hard time deciding what this is. I thought I decided it was goldenrod, but I'm not sure. But I've left it because the bugs are eating this and not my squash. Oh, I think we got one ready tonight. See, this is what I'm talking about, the fungus. I'm not really sure what it is. But it is everywhere on the squash. Oh my goodness. I didn't even see this bad boy. And we're growing the watermelon vertically, which I'm really enjoying. It's a lot of fun. But if you're not careful and move them, you'll have this going on. Look at it. It's so silly. Um, but yeah, I'm just really learning as I go. Nasturtiums, marigolds, cantaloupe, watermelon, carrots, purslane, onions oregano, more marigolds, more onions. This is my little lettuce area, which the lettuce and kale is actually doing pretty good in this heat. The peas aren't doing so good, but we need them for seeds right now, so we're letting them go. Borage, all of our peas. And you see, a lot of people get upset when their vegetables and whatnot bolt and go to seed. That happened very fast with my radishes. But that's okay. You can harvest and eat these seed pods. Or what I'm doing is leaving them to collect seeds. The same happened with my carrots. That's okay. Now we have seeds for next year. And I just love the borage. I think we can see a little bumblebee already on it. The bees love them. Hi, little guy. And they're awesome edible. We want to make sure we're constantly picking to tell the plant to keep producing. Christian, would you like one? Do you want to tell them what it tastes like? Yes. What does it taste like? Cucumber. It's just no, there's no failing in guarding. There's just learning. Mother Nature 
plants, the earth is very forgiving. There's no wrong way to do it. Every climate, every person is different. What works for me might not work for you. But the first thing that you can do is just start. Start somewhere. Start anywhere.